Cardano has had an impressive run over the past year. Is it due for a correction or will it continue moving to the upside ahead of the Gogan mainnet launch? Hey guys, my name is Sheldon Evans, welcome back. Or if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on all bell notifications. As you know, YouTube does gatekeep some of this cryptocurrency content here on YouTube. So if you wanna be the first to know about this type of content and get notified, turn on those bell notifications. So on my display right now, I have the ADA chart open or the ADA CoinGecko page. And as you can see, we're just under a dollar right now. We did manage to break that previous psychological level at $1 before turning back around and coming back down. We are seeing a market-wide dip today. So that is why we are seeing this decline in price. But Cardano could have some upside potential in the near term future. And I'll explain exactly why. So if you look at the ADA USD chart right now, we've had a quite a large correction all the way from just over a dollar at a dollar 20, a dollar 18, all the way back down to 94, 95 cents. So that's around a 20% correction over the past couple of days, which is a good correction that is healthy for the, the chart. It's healthy for any cryptocurrency to correct after a major parabolic move. And right now you can see that we're currently touching that 50 period moving average which has been historically a good position or a good place to buy or consider entering into Cardano. So at this point, it might be a buying point. I will be adding some to my position right now. As you can see, we have bounced over it or just crossed below it in the past. And as we do that, where we touched it here, here and here, we're touching it again. So it is a good opportunity to enter. Now Cardano has been having an absolutely insane run over the past year. Like I said, moving from just under two cents during the Corona March dump of last year, all the way up to over a dollar at a dollar 18, dollar 19 cents. Now, this price is still lower than Cardano's previous all time high in 2017 at around a dollar 40. So, until we reach that point, Cardano still has some move to the upside. Since we have the Gogan mainnet launch coming up towards the end of February or the beginning of March, that is at least the expected date. That does happen and everything goes according to plan. I believe Cardano does still have a lot of room to the upside and I'll explain why in a second. So earlier this month, I moved some of my Ethereum to Cardano. If you're a part of the Patreon, you would have known when I did that move. So if you haven't yet, you can join and check all my trades that I do, upcoming videos, exclusive access to content that isn't released on YouTube. So if you do want that, check out the Patreon. But if we look at the move, where I moved some of my ETH to Cardano around the 6th or 7th of February. At the peak, that was over 100% move. So let's measure that correctly. So from the 7th of February, it was around here. It was a 112% move and still currently around 90, close to 100% move against Ethereum. Now, Cardano is my major hedge against Ethereum for this exact reason that Cardano is looking to take some of the market share away from Ethereum. We've heard the term Ethereum killer hundreds and hundreds of times and many projects have come and gone trying to compete with Ethereum, but they just don't manage to do that. But Cardano is slightly different. If we look at the historical chart for Cardano, you can see that we've struggled with this level in the past. So if I expand this chart slightly, you'll see that we've touched it three times in the past. Back in April 2018, April 2019, July 2020, and now again. Now, if we can break through this, as you can see, we have broken through it. If we can turn this into support, we can continue moving towards the upside. There might be some more resistance around this level, but if we continue moving and we get all the way back to the 2017 high, which is around that level over there, we still have a huge gain against Ethereum to go, which is around another 140% move against Ethereum. Now, I don't believe this will happen in the short term future because we aren't near a market cycle peak just yet. So this was during the 2017 market cycle peak. We still got a lot of room to go before this happens. We might see more of a healthy move towards the upside if we do manage to break and turn this level around. And the reason that I be believe this is possible is due to a number of factors. So obviously, as I said right now, could be a good buying opportunity, even though the chart is looking quite parabolic, we still have some room to go before moving to that upside. And I just wanna highlight something, even though everything in the market is kind of red today, we do have a parabolic move from crypto.com, which I mentioned a few days ago, or a few weeks ago, as you guys would have known, was due for a major pump. And we're currently up over 100% today. It has had a bit of a correction, but the reason this happened is 
Crypto.com did one of the largest token burns in history. Around 70 billion tokens were burnt today. So a lot of money was basically taken off the market and that it decreased the supply of Crypto.com, increasing its value. So if you are looking to get a Crypto.com card, you can check out the link in the description and you can sign up with that link and get a free $25 bonus if you purchase a Crypto.com card or purchase Crow and stake it for one of their debit cards. Also, if you create a new account, you get 0% freeze fees for the first 30 days, which is fantastic if you're looking to buy crypto right now because you can save on those fees if you are entering the market for the first time. So check that out. And if you want to earn some extra cash, you can send that over to BlockFi and stake it and earn even extra interest on your crypto up to 8.6% APY on your crypto. So if you are planning on holding your crypto for a while, send it over here. You can get up to a $250 bonus as well if you use the link in the description. So check that out. Now, I want to talk about Cardano again. Currently, around $25 billion is locked up or staked on Cardano. That's around 71% of the total supply. This is an insane amount of money to be locked up compared to Ethereum, where only 2.63% of the supply is locked up. And the reason there's such a huge or vast difference between these two cryptocurrencies and how much money is staked is due to a simple factor that you don't actually know when you'll get your money back if you were to stake your Ethereum. So ETH2 stakers must lock away 32 ETH to become a validator, which at the current ETH price is worth over $60,000. Now this might have changed, obviously due to the minor correction that we're seeing in the market right now, but it's still around $50,000 to lock up your Ethereum. So you need a, it's got a large barrier to entry at least, to become an ETH 2.0 validator and to stake your Ethereum. Now, the thing is, once you stake your Ethereum, since ETH 2.0 hasn't actually launched yet, you don't know when you'll be able to withdraw it, withdraw that. So you send off your Ethereum and it gets locked up in ETH 2, ETH 2.0, and you can't get it back until that mainnet is launched or until ETH 2.0 is launched. So it's sort of this up in the air speculative bet as to when you'll be able to get your Ethereum back. Whereas Cardano doesn't have that problem right now. You can stake and unstake as, as you wish. Obviously, there are some lockup periods. Now, this is one of the main reasons that Cardano is so impressive right now, is that it's aiming to be the most decentralized, most secure, fastest blockchain. And the reason they're doing this is they're trying to attract attention from the true financial world or the, the existing financial world. So Ethereum obviously has been doing this in the past, and that is why it has grown so much. But there are exploits, there are exploitable aspects of Ethereum that sort of draw away or push away some investors and some financial institutions because there is a risk. There's a risk of lost funds, there's a risk of hacking, there's a risk of exploits. And this can be a dangerous factor, especially if large amounts of money are going to be pushing into the network. So what ADO is aiming to do is to make it a no-brainer for these financial financial institutions to create a decentralized product or move their dApps or create products on top of the Cardano blockchain. And once this happens, which is what is aiming going or what is aiming to happen, by the end of February with the Gogan mainnet launch, essentially Cardano is going to be launching a way for anyone to generate smart contracts or use smart contracts on top of the ADA network, which is exactly what Ethereum is doing right now. Although there's a slight difference in that Cardano would be safer. It would have a more secure network because it is going to be using a different programming language, which we'll talk about in a second as well. So in terms of functionality, this upgrade would equate to Cardano's native tokens to ERC-20 fungible and ERC-721 non-fungible tokens on Ethereum. For the first time, users on Cardano blockchain will be able to create their own tokens, be it fungible tokens or NFTs. The first major difference following the upgrade is that there will be no execution fees, which are usually charged to a user when interacting with a token smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain, known as gas fees. Now, you guys know what a major problem it is right now with the Ethereum gas fees. That is what I believe is stunting the growth of Ethereum currently. No one is willing to pay, well, there are many people willing to pay hundreds of dollars for a transaction, but it essentially makes it a whale's playground on Ethereum doing or paying these hundreds of dollars in transaction fees. Now, if there's a way to circumvent that or pay fewer fees, that is where the money will flow. That is where majority of retail investors will go because it will be cheaper and easier to, to transact. And that is very similar to what we've seen lately with Binance Smart Chain or BS BSC. So if we open the BNB coin right now, you'll see that it's absolutely going insane. Currently the third largest cryptocurrency by market cap because it is stealing some of that network effect or that network share from Ethereum because of the low gas fees and fast transactions. So currently at $37 billion market cap, if we take a look at what's happened over the past few weeks, you can see that it's just 
basically gone straight up. And that is because many of these projects are launching on the Binance Smart Chain or porting to the Binance Smart Chain for the time being, since it is cheap and almost instant to send and use the network. The problem with BNB and BSC is that it's technically a centralized network. All the validators are owned by Binance, making it a centralized network. Yes, there is an option to submit a slashing request that anyone can do to fight back against malicious code or malicious actors in the network, it still is a centralized network. While this might not be an important factor to the average retail investor that doesn't even know what, that they're using a blockchain, it is an important factor and one of the main reasons that cryptocurrency exists is due to decentralization being such a large need. So when projects come around and start fighting back against Ethereum and creating something that is similar, but provides faster or cheaper transactions, it will steal some of that network share away from Ethereum, at least for the time being, considering that it's centralized and eventually the network or the majority of people will move back to Ethereum or another blockchain that can solve the same problems, but in a decentralized way. And that is what I believe Cardano will be doing. Since they are going to be launching smart contracts in a way that is very similar to Ethereum, but it is completely decentralized. In fact, it will be the most decentralized network with very, very fast transactions and cheap transactions. And if they can pull this off and the, the mainnet launches without a hitch, I think it's got a large market share that it's going to be able to take away from Ethereum. And that comes down to another factor, which is the ERC20 token converter. So as you guys know, it is very difficult to pull people away from one pro project to another project or from one network to another network based on staying power and first movers advantage. So if somebody has built something on Ethereum, it's quite difficult to get them to move away from Ethereum to Cardano or to Polkadot or to any other chain because they have to basically redevelop or rebuild on that network. It's the same as somebody creating an iOS or an Android app. First, they'll develop it on iOS and then they'll move it over to Android or either or. They won't do them both continuously because it does take a lot of development and it can be a complicated process to develop for both platforms. Now, what Cardano has done is they demoed the RC20 token converter earlier last year, which essentially means that anyone on the Ethereum blockchain or any project on the Ethereum network can be easily ported directly to Cardano. So they'll burn the Ethereum tokens and mint the equivalent Cardano tokens on the ADA network. So they're essentially going to shift or bring tons of network effect from Ethereum directly over to ADA without much trouble at all. And that is a game changer in my opinion, because if they can do this and they can pull this off correctly, many projects, I believe we will see many projects moving away from Ethereum and directly into ADA by this simple method right here. Because Cardano is technically at this point a better blockchain than Ethereum in terms of security and speed. So as you guys know, they have the Marlow pl Playground, which is a special purpose language for financial contracts on Cardano, allowing contracts to be written in the language of finance rather than using general purpose language on the blockchain. It is also safer. Some sorts of errors are impossible to write. So I've likened this sort of playground to Squarespace or Wix or some sort of what you see is what you get website builder in the past. So essentially, if you can drag and drop things together to build out a token or to build out a product, then you can avoid errors that are easily exploitable. So when you're developing code from the ground up, it is easy to write errors into that code that could be th then be exploited in the future. But if you have code that is already audited or that is already safe, you can drag and drop it quite easily and build something entirely new that is replicates or is similar to the traditional financial system, but has no errors and has no exploitable aspects to it. And that can be a very attractive idea to investors coming into the space who are looking to invest in large amounts in cryptocurrency. So again, these are institutions. That is one thing that scares away institutions is the risk of loss of funds. But if we have something that is proven to be safe and secure, these institutions will move into things like Cardano. And obviously Cardano is going to be written in Haskell. So Haskell pro programmers can make it much easier reason to can make it much easier to reason about their code, equational reasoning. Not only does it make it easier to write correct code, but it is also invaluable for testing or even proving its correctness. As we've discussed above, this allows programmers to have a larger degree of certainty that the code they've implemented is correct. For the future that we envisage for Cardano, namely becoming the next global social and financial operating system, assurance and reliability are essential. This will bring billions of dollars of value or more on chain, locked through smart contracts or managed via descent decentralized autonomous organizations. So by using Haskell, this programming language that has been around for a while, it, there's less room for error. There's less room for something to be incorrect. 
So it makes it a more secure network because like I've said, these, these errors can't be written into the code. So the code has to be secure. It has to be safe before it will even function. So that is one of the major factors that come into play in making Cardano such a game changer in terms of bringing tons of network effect away from Ethereum. Now, Cardano obviously also has a lot of hype around it. There are tons of people investing in Cardano right now. And that's why we've seen such a major run because it is showing to be one of the next game changers after Ethereum. So we've even got a tweet from Gene Simmons that says, so for about 90 cents, people can own an ADA, Cardano, coin, I do. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, almost $53,000 per coin is beyond the reach of most people. I own that too. I like ADA because anyone can invest. Of course, it's up to you to do your research, Google it. Now, this is entirely incorrect information. It makes no sense what he's saying. Essentially, he's saying that ADA is cheaper than Bitcoin because it's 90 cents compared to $53,000 for Bitcoin. If you understand how market caps work, you'll understand that this is completely wrong. It's just due to, due to the supply of ADA being much more than Bitcoin, so the price per coin is a lot less. Obviously, ADA also has a lower market cap currently than Bitcoin, but if it were to rise to the same market cap as Bitcoin, meaning the same amount of money invested in Cardano as Bitcoin, it would still be cheaper per coin than Bitcoin based on the amount of supply. So there is currently 45 billion total maximum supply that is available for Cardano. Cardano and the current circulating supply is around 31.9 billion tokens. So there's a lot more tokens in existence for Cardano than Bitcoin. And this information is incorrect, but I just wanted to highlight that it is garnering a lot of hype, even from people outside of crypto. And that is the major factor. That is where the money comes from. Sure, you can create a project that appeals to everyone who understands crypto and is already in cryptocurrency, and you'll manage to bring some money in that way. But what ADA is aiming to do is bring external money, money that hasn't yet entered the cryptocurrency market into cryptocurrency. And that is what is very important. Trillions of dollars are sitting out there, whereas only around $1.7 trillion, the current market cap of all cryptocurrency together, 1.6 trillion right now due to the, the little bit of a dump. But there's trillions more out there waiting to come into crypto. And if we have projects like ADA come around that are secure, safe and fast, I believe that they will first look to ADA as the first section that they'll or the first sector that they'll move into that is proven to be safe for these financial institutions and their money. So I do believe that Cardano has a lot of room to run over the next couple of weeks, at least up until the launch of the May mainnet launch, which is expected at the end of February. Hopefully we'll see how that goes. But if everything goes according to plan, I have high hopes for ADA and I believe we could see one to two, maybe even three dollars very, very soon again in the future. Obviously, we haven't reached $3 before, $1.48. If we double that, we'll get to $2.80, which is essentially what Bitcoin did when it surpassed its previous all-time high. And many people are thinking that the same thing might happen for ADA. So I hope you guys liked the video. If you did like it, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications. And as always, I shall see you in the next video. Cheers.